Hey guys, it is Angie here and today's video is all about weight fluctuations. What is normal, what is fat gain and what is just a fluctuation? I don't know about you but I used to be absolutely nuts when it came to the scale so every time I would get on the scale I could not understand like in one day I gained a kilo and sometimes it would even be if I was eating the same things as I had always eaten I'd be like what the hell literally I gained a kilo people I ate like five nuts and now I put on a kilo so I wanted to do a video to kind of talk about the different fluctuations that you should expect. Then what I also want to talk about in this video is how much you actually have to eat to gain a real genuine kilogram of fat. And before I forget, um, as always with my videos, I've created a really cool download with you that's for you that summarizes this entire lesson so that you don't have to remember everything. And next time you're wondering, is it a fluctuation or is it fat? You can head on to your download and you can remind yourself of everything that I've gone through in this video. So you get onto the scale and overnight, it seems like you've gained two kilos. How is this even possible? I mean, maybe you went out for dinner last night and maybe you ate a little bit more than you normally would, or maybe you did have the dessert and the bread and the wine. Did you actually gain two kilograms of fat overnight? So there are a couple of reasons for weight fluctuations that I want to go through in this video so that you can start determining whether you've really gained fat or whether it just is a normal um, you know, fluctuation that does happen. So firstly, let's get started on what causes normal weight fluctuation. Normally, if you have gained a kilo overnight, the first thing that it could be is just different hydration levels. So depending on how much water you drink or how much fluids you're putting in, um, sometimes your body can hold on to a bit of water. So let's say that um, yesterday you didn't drink a lot of water, you were slightly dehydrated, and today you just drink a ton more water. And um, sometimes when you go from a state of dehydration to hydration, your body does hold on to a bit more water. So what I did want to show you in this video is actually the difference between what just going to the loo to make a wee, like the difference in your weight um, and what that can actually be. So um, you can check it out in this next clip. As you can see, something simple like just going to the bathroom um, and just that little bit of fluid can actually make a huge difference to how much you weigh. So that could be the first reason that you've actually gained um, weight on the scale, where most of the time, obviously that's not fat, that's just different hydration levels. Okay, so the second reason why you could have gained weight on the scale is because of an increased salt intake. So if you have gone out for dinner, um, it is very common for restaurants to use a lot of salt and a lot of spices. Um, other things that can make you have extra salt are things like sushi, like soya sauce. The soya sauce that you use has a lot of salt in it. Perhaps you had a lot of crisps. Maybe you had a bra where you really seasoned your meat a lot. Um, or maybe you had just any dish that was really kind of salty. And so that increased salt intake can definitely make your body retain more water and so that could be another reason why you can very easily gain what seems like weight overnight when in actual fact as soon as your sodium levels go back to normal um, your weight will very quickly drop back down again. Number three is hormones. Now we all know the dreaded hormones that come um, you know, just around, the, just before um, we're about to start our period. Sorry, if you're a guy, just close your ears for a few minutes on this one. So it is absolutely normal for you to gain weight just before your period. This is due to different hormonal levels. I won't go into all the science of it, but generally most women can gain one to two kilos, um, even up to three, depending on how hormonal you are, um, in the week leading up to your period and sometimes the first few days as well. So normally, um, once your period starts, that weight will drop back down again. But something that I do want you to note is that 
often um, our hunger also increases just before our periods. And so um, I wouldn't say that it's normally just hormonal if you are eating like everything in sight. Um, and unfortunately, if you are really hungry and you are overeating, it's gonna push those levels up even more. And so your weight would even go up maybe even more than one to two kilos. I always do recommend using an app. Um, I use one called Flow, where I actually track my cycle. Um, and so I always know exactly where I am. And so if I jump on the scale and my weight is up, I can be like, no problem. I know it'll come back down. It's because I'm just before my period. So number four, the next thing that can cause um, a weight fluctuation is your digestion. Digestion. So um, if you are not regular, if you haven't been going to the bathroom regularly, I'm not going to harp too much on this one. But um, if you're not having enough fiber, if you're not going to the bathroom regularly, it is very normal to feel bloated. And if your stomach isn't working properly, your weight can definitely also um, be at an all-time high. Um, and then once you know your digestive system all starts working really well again that weight again should go down so if you're feeling really bloated then nine times out of ten if you also have a weight peak at that time it could also very well be because your stomach isn't working 100 percent so up the fiber up the water and hopefully that will normalize again and then last but not least um the last thing that could cause a weight fluctuation is muscle stiffness so when you are going to the gym and you're working out really hard, especially if you start doing weight training, um, what actually happens is there are small tears in your muscle fibers and this causes inflammation. So your body sends fluid there to help repair the muscles. And that fluid is of course water, essentially some fluid retention. And so um, often what happens is when girls start going to the gym for the first two weeks or so, they are so stiff. And then they say to me, Ange, oh my God, I build muscle so quickly. And you actually kind of feel a little bit fluffy or like a little bit big. Um, and then they're so frightened after two weeks, they're like, I'm never doing weight training again. And they just never do it again. And unfortunately, that is the worst thing to do. You really need to push through and push through the feeling of that muscle stiffness. And after about two weeks of weight training, um, that should subside again and you will drop the excess water. So that is the fifth one. If you have just started weight training or perhaps you've had a really tough training session, your body could very well um, be pushing up on the scale or your weight could be pushing up on the scale because you have excess muscle stiffness and your body is holding on to a bit more fluid. So don't panic, continue with the weight training. It is the only way to get sculpted and lean. So um, just stay consistent, carry on doing it and those, um, the weight will drop down again. Um, just a note on building muscle. Some women think that you can build muscle really quickly and um, the rate of what you uh, of muscle growth that you can actually have as a woman with our levels of testosterone obviously this is if you're not um taking steroids of course but um so a normal rate of muscle growth would be if you are training really hard if you're eating enough protein if you're getting enough calories in you would probably gain between two to four kilos a year that is how much muscle gain you can have. So if you are weight training and your diet is on point, there's no way that you're going to gain excess muscle or excess weight. Um, it's a combination of those two that's really important. So I promise you, you will not get bulky. Um, as I said, it can take up to a year to just gain two to four kilograms of muscle. Okay, so now we've spoken about all the different things that could cause a weight fluctuation that is not fat. But now I know that you're gonna be excited about this one. How many calories or how much food does it actually take for you to gain a genuine kilo of fat? So you guys know that it's all about calories in versus calories out. And so you are burning a specific amount of calories every single day. That is called your maintenance calories, right? So for your body to stay exactly as it is, you would be working on your maintenance calories. So that's how much energy your body is burning on a regular day. We know that when we're trying to lose fat, we drop it down to a calorie deficit. That means that you're eating less calories than your maintenance level, which means you're in a calorie deficit, which means that you're eating less food than you're actually burning. And that additional calories that your body needs to function, you'll actually be taking from your fat stores. But for this exercise, I'm just gonna talk about um, when you are at a maintenance level. So there are 3,500 calories in 
half a kilogram of fat, okay? So let's say the average woman, her maintenance calories are 1,800 per day for her to stay exactly as she is. So that means you have 1,800 calories, that's your calorie budget to work with. You would need to eat an additional 3,500 calories over and above your maintenance level to put on just half a kilo of fat. And now there are also some other factors like the um, thermic effect of food and things like that, that actually all of those calories wouldn't even go to fat, but let's say that they would. Um, three, what does 3,500 calories actually look like? It is a hell of a lot of food. So let's go to McDonald's to do this little exercise of exactly what 3,500 calories looks like. Hey guys, so I'm heading to McDonald's to show you exactly what 3,500 calories look like. Let's go. I never order McDonald's, so that's quite a big burger over there. Um, let me leave this open. And then we had a quarter pounder with cheese, of course. That's like another big burger. I then have a large fries. Everyone thinks McDonald's fries are the best. I, I think Steers definitely beat them, but there we go. And then I have 10 chicken nuggets to top it all off. So guys, that is just gives you a simple idea on what 3,500 calories actually looks like. And remember, there's only half a kilo in, or 3,500 calories in half a kilo. So you would need to double this on top of your maintenance calories to actually put on a genuine kilo of fat. So remember that next time you overeat and you're feeling guilty, that it takes quite a few calories to actually put on genuine fat. But at the same time, it's pretty easy to do it over a period of time. So we have all of our McDonald's now and we actually just had lunch, so I'm sure that we would have maybe snacked on something. But now we have to find someone good that is going to appreciate this McDonald's. Who do you think we should give it to? <laughs> we'll find someone, I'm sure. Let's go and do some good. Do you guys like McDonald's? Yes. 
Yeah, you guys can order shit. There's burgers and chips. Thanks a lot. Oh, enjoy, yeah. enjoy. Yeah. You can only have McDonald's once a month. Yeah. <laughs> then that's enough. Okay. <laughs> so as you can see, that is a lot of food. So next time you do eat a little bit much, I want you to remember this. It is pretty difficult to gain a genuine half a kilo in just one day. So if you are consistent and you eat pretty well most of the time, meaning that you're staying at either at maintenance level or at a calorie deficit if you are trying to lose fat, that means that you can forgive yourself, you can move on. And that's why in the health and fitness space, we always say consistency is key. It is what you do most that will get you the result. What I want you to remember from this is that it takes quite a lot of food to put on a genuine half a kilo. So if you do have dessert next time and perhaps you go over your calorie budget or you eat a little bit more than you thought you should have and you get on the scale and you think, oh my God, I've gained a kilo. I want you to remember that it is scientifically not possible because the amount of food that you would actually need to eat in one sitting to gain that much weight, to gain even half a kilo is a hell of a lot more than you would expect. But I want to put a little disclaimer on this and say that it is actually pretty easy for you to over time continuously go over your calorie budget by a few hundred calories and then that is how you actually slowly gain weight. So let's say every single day for the next week you went over your calories by 500. do this often enough you can very easily without even realizing realizing it start gaining weight over time and so what I really wanted to share with you in this video is that it is quite hard um, to just gain weight in one day so don't be too hard on yourself next time you overeat next time it's a big occasion and perhaps you eat more than you'd like and you know next time you get on the scale and you think damn I've gained weight overnight I want you to remember this and at the same time, I want you to remember that it is also pretty easy to go over your budget every single day by a little bit. And over time, that will absolutely cause weight gain. So my advice to you is number one, you need to know what your calorie budget is. And number two, you need to start tracking how much you're putting in versus how much you're putting out. And so I want you to really remember this video next time you panic and you think, oh my God, I gained um, one kilo overnight or this week I put on a kilo meanwhile I was so good I want you to remember those five different reasons for weight fluctuation and as I mentioned I created a really cool download for you so next time you're wondering is it fat or is it a fluctuation you can go back to this download and remind yourself of all of the reasons because I know sometimes it can just be a mental thing when we get on that scale we can drive ourselves absolutely nuts when we feel like we're doing the right things or maybe you just had one bad day um, and then you're like, damn, I gained weight. When in actual fact, it could very possibly be a fluctuation. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that it gave you some clarity as to what you can expect if you are jumping on and off the scale. Um, and just a final note, really don't let those numbers um, rule your life. It's so not worth it. So if you are feeling like Depending on what the scale says, you either have a good or bad day. I would really recommend getting off the scale altogether and rather using another way to measure your progress. And as always, if you need help on figuring out what your calorie budget is, what you should be eating for fat loss, then head on down to my website, leangirlguide.com, and I would love to help you out. Otherwise, I will check you on my next vlog. So if you're number one, Stop hoofing at me. Why are you wearing those glasses? Do you think it's okay for people to see the lean girl at my